has sought to go beyond race, religion, ethnicity, gender, and culture. He is perhaps the most misunderstood, misrepresented, maltreated, and maligned person on the face of the earth. But not only is the stuff that makes him love all the more, he loves his enemies. He lives for the sake of others. And no cost is too great in order to bring back the family of God. He has committed his life to restoring us to God's true love, God's true life, and true lineage, so that we look upon each other as brothers and sisters, one family under God. Thank you everyone so much for joining us this evening for Chosen. Before we begin, I would like to share a few announcements. So please bear with me as I open the screen. Okay. So we have a special program this coming Wednesday, December 28th. It is the third anniversary celebration of WCLC. So as you can see the flyer here, we have wonderful speakers, uh, Dr. Yoon, Young Ho, Bishop Noel Jones, Dr. Walsh, many wonderful speakers. And we will put the link in the chat so you can register. And one more special program. Um, the YCLC also have their third anniversary. I will briefly show their video so you can get more information. Thank 
the Bible. She takes the divine principle and begins to teach. Uh, I think I'm experiencing some technical issues, but if you go to their website, they have a video, a wonderful video that explains their program and their third anniversary, and it's going to be very special. It will be Wednesday, December 28th at 9 p.m. Eastern time, so please join if you're able to, and we'll also put the link for that in the chat as well. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to see for this evening, Pastor Antonio Bowen, the YCLC National Coach Chairman. Antonio Bowen. Uh, is he here? Pastor Bowen, he was with us a moment ago. But something may have happened to disrupt his being with us at this time. If he comes on later, we will bring him back up to say a few more words mm -hmm. relative to YCLC. It's an exciting time for YCLC. We are excited about it. Hope that you are excited about it. Hope that you will invite people to join us at 9 p.m. on Wednesday. Please remember to invite clergy to join us also for Chosen every Monday at 7.30. We are pleased that tonight with us, we have Patriarch George Augustus Stalling, nominal, ready to deliver to us once again the word that has stirred his heart, has stirred the heart of so many through him. And he's here tonight to make sure that through our ears, to our mind, we can have it soak again into our hearts. Well, welcome to the screen at this time, none other than the one and only. Patriarch George Augustus Stalin. Thank you so much, my beloved and esteemed brother, Bishop and Dr. Luan Abram Rouse, and uh, season's greetings to all who have gathered together on this chosen program tonight. And to make this program even more special, we are honored and privileged to have one of the senior states persons of God in the Reverend Dr. Gilda Webb, Webb Price, Dr. Gilda Webb Price, who's gonna lead us all to the throne of grace with an opening prayer uh, prior to our session. Let us receive Dr. Gilda Webb Price at this time. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, we can, oh. loud and clear. Good. Uh, I just want to thank God that we have really successfully and we are all here after yesterday's event. Merry Christmas one more time. Uh, thank God for this as we greet our heavenly parent, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our true parent of all humanity. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come, Lord, thanking you for these, your servants, Lord, whom you've placed over us to lead us in your footsteps, Lord. We are so grateful. Thanking you this day, Lord, for this new day 
and fit for these wise men you've placed here, Lord. And Father God, for the words you've placed in their mouths this day, Lord. I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for teaching them that they can teach us, Lord. For leading them that they can lead us, Father God. It's our desire to walk in the paths of righteousness. And Father God, lead us, guide us. As you speak this night, Lord, I pray that you'll touch every ear that hear your voice. Lord, I pray that each heart will be open, Lord God, to receive your word. And Father, we pray that we will go out and apply what we have heard tonight. And Lord, we will not fail to praise you. We will not fail to thank you. We will not fail to glorify you for your servants, Lord. Touch them, Lord. Touch. Touch the lips. Touch the voices, Lord. That they'll be heard with clarity. Grant wisdom. Deliver us, Lord. Those who are not well. I pray in the name of Jesus, heal. You are the healer divine. And deliver us, Lord God, from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Bless God. Bless God. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Price. Thank you have set the tone for our presentation tonight on Chosen, entitled Eschatology. The last, the last days. Eight. Oh, wow. And this presentation, uh, Dr. Price, is going to be awesome yes. because it is going to bring us into uh, a, a new perspective or understanding mm -hmm. of what is the what the Bible is saying in the context of the last days, yes. what has developed uh, systematically into a doctrinal teaching of the mm. universal church, mm. uh, eschatology or the study of the last days or the last things. Dr. Tanya Evers gave an excellent uh, presentation on eschatology mm. uh, as, as, as in understanding the word itself uh, at the in her comments section on last week's program. And I would encourage anyone who, who was not present for uh, our chosen program on last Monday to go back and view the broadcast and hear Dr. Edwards's uh, unpacking of that word eschatology. And mm. uh, did a, an excellent job on that, a fine job. Mm -hmm. uh, so I am I'm excited to follow on the foot on the foothills of her explanation of eschatology so that as we move forward tonight, mm look at the, the understanding of the eschaton or the last days from the viewpoint of the original substance of the divine principle mm -hmm. or the exposition of the divine principle, the shortened version, we will have a new understanding and, and even a greater appreciation mm -hmm. of what the Bible really means in regards to its biblical pronouncements regarding or concerning the last day. So Minister Young Soon Quinn, if you could please pull up that section. Thank you very much. We see section three here uh, and it is entitled The Last Days. Mm -hmm. These PowerPoint presentations can be used by you in teaching this subject to your, your members or to your formation classes where you're training uh, ministers. That's where this material is really helpful. If any of us is engaged in training men and women to assume uh, leadership in our churches who are, that we are prepared for ordination uh, to ordain ministry as pastors and preachers and teachers, mm -hmm. then we use this material to take them to a new, more powerful understanding of last day. So now we're ready for that first slide, Minister Quinn. Mm -hmm. 
we're going to look at we're going to look at the meaning of the last days mm -hmm. from as i said from the perspective of what is revealed in the original substance of the divine person the last days is the time when with the advent of the messiah as the turning point the evil world under satanic sovereignty is replaced by the ideal world under God's sovereignty. Hell on earth, listen to this statement here. This, this is revelatory in and of itself that hell on earth will be mm -hmm. transformed into the kingdom of heaven on earth. Hell on earth transformed into the kingdom of heaven on earth. Wow, get ready, mm -hmm. fasten those seatbelts. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a rocky ride here next slide. Mm. So therefore, it will not be a day of fear when the world will be destroyed by global catastrophes, as, as many Christians have believed. In fact, it will be a day of joy when the cherished hope of humankind, the desire of the ages, will be realized. Next slide. So. As we look at the Bible, we are going to discover, and that's what the principle does. The principle connects the dots. It gives us a fuller understanding or appreciation of what mm -hmm. the scriptures have said from the beginning, from the book of Genesis on through to the last book that is placed in the Bible, the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. So we're going to look at the Bible now and come to discover some of us for the first time, that the last days does not, does not pertain to the, the end of the world or, or, or the, the final uh, happenings on Mother Earth, but there are biblical passages that have spoken of the last days in many different texts. So we see that the last days are repeated several times. Since human beings fell, God has attempted more than once to consummate his providence to restore the original world. That's the whole concept here, to restore the original world. Nevertheless, at each attempt, human beings failed to fulfill their responsibility, thus frustrating God's will. Consequently, dispensations of the last days have been repeated several times. This can be confirmed by a close study of the Bible. Next slide, please. So Noah's day was the last days. That's way back in the Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament recorded in the uh, Old Testament that Noah's day was the last days. God wanted to destroy, remember, that God wanted to destroy by the flood, the evil world and, and the sinful history biblically recognized as approximately 600 years, 1600 years, raising up Noah's family and resurrecting the ideal world upon the foundation of their faith. If we, if we look at that passage in Genesis chapter six and verse 13, here's what it reads in the New American Bible. God said to Noah, quote, I have decided to put an end to all mortals on earth. The earth is full of lawlessness because of them. So I will destroy them and all life on the earth. Doesn't that sound like a reference to last days? In the New Testament, Jesus's day was also the last days. God sent Jesus to vanquish the, sat the satanic sovereignty and establish the God-centered ideal world. We look at the Gospel of John, John chapter 5, verse 22. And what do we read? John chapter 5, verse 22. Jesus says, nor does the Father judge anyone, but he has given all judgment to his Son, so that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the the Father who sent him. And I'm going to read verse 24 as well. Jesus continues to say, Amen, amen. I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes in the one who sent me has eternal life and will not come to condemnation, but has passed from death to life. So there's another reference there to the whole concept of the last days. 
that we probably had not thought about. Next slide, please. So the day of the Christ's second advent is also the last day. He will accomplish the goal of the providence of restoration, both spiritually and physically, and restore the kingdom of heaven on earth. We go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 29, where the word of God says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from the sky and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Next slide. Please. So let us look at Bible verses concerning the signs of last days. We're going to read, a, we're going to hear a, from the scriptures now, a lot of reference to certain signs or symbols that would be indicative of the last days. But the question for us, do we approach these passages literally, namely calamit calamities and radical changes taking place? Or do we look at all of these passages in a symbolic way? Let us see. Now, many Christians believe that in the last days, natural calamities and radical changes beyond the imagination of modern men will take place, as is literally written in the Bible. However, if they understood that human history is the history of restoration, mm -hmm. then they would know that the signs of the last days prophesied in the Bible will not take place literally. So let us investigate what the prophecies concerning the last days actually symbolize. Next mm. slide. So again, we hear the first, one of the first prophecies is that heaven and earth will be destroyed mm -hmm. and a new heaven and new earth created. Now in Genesis 6, chapter 6, verse, th verse 13, we hear that God determined to destroy the earth in Noah's time. Noah's time was the last days. Yet, guess what? The world was not destroyed. Mm. The earth is eternal, as the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1, 4 says, quote, a generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. Mm. Close quote. And in the, in the 78th division, of the 150, fall, 150 Psalms in verse 69, it states, quote, he built his sanctuary like the high heavens, like the earth, which he has founded forever, like the earth, which he has founded for, again, like the earth, which he, God, has founded forever. Next slide. So the prophecies that heaven and earth will be destroyed mean that the tyranny of Satan will be overthrown. To create a new heaven and new earth means to restore heaven and earth to God's sovereignty founded on Christ. I want to say that again. To create a new heaven and new earth means to restore heaven and earth to God's sovereignty founded on Christ. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. So we hear about another prophecy. The, that's another, the second prophecy, heaven and earth judged by fire. What could this possibly mean? What is the meaning of the prophecy that, quote, the heavens will be kindled and dissolved and the elements will melt with fire as contained in the Bible in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 12, that this will all take place in the last days. Mm -hmm. In the Old Testament, the last book found a uh, place in the, in the Hebrew scriptures of the Old Testament, the book of Malachi. Malachi, prophesying of the time of Jesus, spoke of a, of a day burning with the fire of judgment. Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. Jesus also said, as found in, as recorded in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verse 49, Quote, I came to cast fire upon the earth. Next slide, please. So nevertheless, nevertheless, there is no record that in his time, 
the historical Jesus judged the world with literal fire. It is written, is not my word like fire? Refer to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, 23 verse 29. Therefore, judgment by fire represents judgment mm -hmm. by the word the of word. God. Next slide, please. The word, the word. The word, the word, the word. So why? Let us look at the reason judgment is done by the word. In the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 3, it is written that human beings are created through the word. God's that. ideal of creation was that the first human ancestors fulfill the purpose of the word by, in, by incarnating the word. In other words, by enfleshing mm. the word. That's what incarnation is, to enflesh the word. Yet they did not keep the word and fell. Since then, God has tried to fulfill the purpose of the word of God by revealing, by, I'm sorry, by, re, by recreating fallen human beings through the word. I want to read that again. Since then, God has tried to fulfill the purpose of the word by recreating fallen human beings through the word. This is the providence of restoration based on the truth. Next slide, please. In the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 14, it is written, quote, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only son from the Father. Close, close. Jesus completely realized the word. He will come again. And in the course of the providence, the word, the word, the word must be set up as the standard by which judgment can be carried out. Next slide, please. Let us look at another prophecy regarding the last days, the dead rising from their tombs. Matthew chapter 27, verse 52 says that at the time of Jesus' death, quote, the tomb also were open and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, close quotes. But this verse does not mean that the decomposed bodies of the saints literally rose up from their graves. This record was made by people who could perceive the spirits of the past saints being resurrected spiritually and appearing on the earth. Next slide. The realm of form spirits. Again, the realm of form spirits. The region of the spirit world where the spirits of the Old Testament saints were abiding appears to be a dark place when viewed from paradise. The realm of the spirit world opened up by Jesus. Hence, it is referred to as a tomb. Next slide, please. We hear another prophecy about people on earth caught up to meet the Lord in the air, as is stated in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. The quote unquote air in this verse, namely in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17, does not refer to the sky over our heads. In the Bible, quote unquote, earth is often a symbol for the fallen world under the sway of evil sovereignty, while quote unquote heaven is often a symbol for the sinless world of good sovereignty. Next slide. So meeting the Lord in the air, Dr. Price, means that the saints will receive the Lord in the world of good sovereignty when Christ comes again and restores the kingdom of heaven, not in the sky, but on earth, by defeating the kingdom of Satan, where Satan rules upon the earth. Next slide, please. We hear about another prophecy, the sun darkened, the moon not giving light, and the stars falling from heaven, as recorded in Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. Genesis chapter 37, verses 9 and 10 relates that when Joseph told 
his dream to his father and brother saying, quote, the sun, the moon, and 11 stars were by bowing down to me, close quotes. His father rebuked him saying, quote, what is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brothers indeed come to bow, bow ourselves to the ground before you, close quotes. In his dream, in Joseph's dream, the sun and moon symbolized the parents while the stars symbolized their children. Next slide, please. Jesus and the Holy Spirit are the true parents who came to give rebirth to humanity in place of Adam and Eve. Therefore, in the prophecy, the sun and moon represent Jesus and the Holy Spirit while the stars represent the faithful believers who are their children. Next slide, please. For the sun to be darkened and the moon to lose its light means that when Christ returns and gives the new truth, the mission period of the New Testament will have lapsed. The prophecy that the stars will fall from heaven signifies that in the last days, many faithful Christians will make a misstep due to disbelief and fall from God's grace. Next slide, please. And I think that brings us to the conclusion of section four, the last days of next week. We will be back again to deal with the last days and the present time. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for your participation. And I turn it back now to our beloved and esteemed uh, leader, our national co-chairman of the American Clergy Leadership Conference, His Excellency, the most reverend doctor and bishop, Luan Abram Rouse. My brother, the floor is now yours. Patriot Stallings, thank you, thank you, and again, thank you. We could go on and on in gratitude for your presentation tonight. However, I want to go on and on with your contribution to our understanding, especially when you talk about last days. There's so much there that we do not really address within Christianity today. And it is, in my mind, many of the reasons why we are seeing the decline that we should not be seeing in Christian walks of life today. And when we talk about religions and the others who are somewhat growing or catching up or the nuns, as they say, who are not particularly interested in picking any real religion, but just existing and allow religions to be some form of whatever, as though they were created by human beings and not a re real desiring of God for us to come into the knowledge, awareness, belief, participation, and actual living and restoration and walking with God on a daily basis. You know, there's something unique about having three men in the Bible who did not experience death or what we would call a portion of the last day experience. There's something about reading how uh, Enoch walked with God. It's something about that need of walking with God, God desiring us to walk. Before we go back to you, Patriot, now I want, just want everybody to, to just think for a moment. Let's just consider this uh, way in which we have received revelation of God. That the, even to the extent of going all the way back to the first creation story and God working by day and night in the process of creation. And I say day and night because it doesn't give God a rest from that creation until that seventh day. And that rest, now we must get it straight, was not a wet rest from being tired. 
or saying, oh, I've got to just leave it alone. It was a time of observing, yeah. looking over all that had been created, even looking over human beings, who we are. And God found good in the creation at that time. But as has been stated by Dr. Edwards before, Dr. Edwards, unlike yourself, we'll probably be calling on you with such a great presentation as you did last week, as uh, Patriot Stallings has indicated, and your great presentation about the, the creation. And then Bishop Edwards coming in talking about the fall. You know, God looked in that creation account and said, we look good. Now we've come and in these last days conversation, we're not looking so good. In fact, we're challenging some of the things that we would like to believe about the, the, the gift of God to the world in the presence of God in the world by saying, as presented tonight, we've got to consider death. We've got to consider judgment. And then in considering this judgment, we're not talking about after we go and ascend somewhere and being at, we're talking about in this time of the second coming that he's here to judge the world. He's here to look at us and hold us accountable, bring us now. I mean, wow, death and resurrection. I mean, oh. And look, not just resurrection of the thoughts of the things that we have done, but resurrection of the dead hmm. should come alive. And wow, Archbishop Stallings, you've got so much going on here tonight, brother, that we could talk about and bring Dr. Edwards into with her account of the eschaton and all that's going to take place. The first thing that I would ask both of you to look at and say to us, Patriot Stallings, talking to you first, where are we really right now in history based on the last day? Well, I truly believe, I truly believe, Dr. Rouse, that in order for us to fully understand the impact of that question that you just addressed uh, to me and and to all of us viewing this broadcast to, tonight is that we come into a better knowledge and understanding of the word of God, particularly when it's to be taken literally uh, versus symbolically. And, and we can say for the most part that a lot of the scriptures that we read uh, have literal meaning, but yet it is so rich in symbolism. Uh, for us to really understand where we are right now in this particular moment, we are in the right season to examine that question, the role that John the Baptist should have played in preparing the way of, uh, of the Lord for the people of his day, particularly the religious establishment, to realize that the Messiah, the Messiah, was on the earth, that the Messiah's presence was imminent. And yet John, not realizing that he stood in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of men towards their God and to prepare a way for them to receive the Messiah, uh, Jesus was rejected. But what is, what, is critically, what is critical in that understanding for me is that if we look at John the, John the baptizers or John the Baptist's life from the perspective of the principle, we come to realize that while his name, while he bore the name John, his mission, his purpose was to be the returning Elijah, which means that the Elijah that went up in the sky in the fiery chariot was not the one who came back down. So there I say, I share all that with you as a, as a pro legominon or a preface to say that even when it comes to re the return of the Messiah, when it comes to the return of Jesus, Will it be the Jesus of 2,000 years ago, the historical Jesus that we celebrated 
his birthday on yesterday? Or will it be someone who like John the Baptist who will come in the spirit and the power of the historical Jesus? This is troubling biblical waters for a lot of us when it comes to realizing that if we are anticipating that same historical Jesus of 2000 years ago to return to the earth, to restore everything, not only on the spiritual, but the physical level as well, we cannot begin to respond to your question as to where are we right now in the whole context of salvation history, as well as the last days. Uh, just one, I wanna to try to make this clearer, that most Christians, if not 99 and 44, 100% of Christians, believe that the Lord of the second advent is associated with the returning of the historical Jesus of 2000 years ago. That's not gonna happen. No more than Elijah came back out of the sky in the fiery chariot to symbolize to the Jewish people that the Mashiach, the Messiah, was imminently uh, present on the earth. It's, it's, we, so if we, we have to look for the Lord of the second advent, hello? And that's the only way we're gonna be able to, to be able to move this thing forward, to, to really establish the kingdom of heaven here on earth, where the, where the kingdom of hell now resides and presides with Satan being at his being its ruler. So the challenge that we face in this day and age is humongous in the sense that if we are going to hasten the day when the kingdom of heaven, also known as the kingdom of God, can be established here on the face of the earth, we've got to attune ourselves spiritually to the whole concept of the returning Lord or the Lord of the second advent, which therefore we acknowledge that we can say that we are at a point where we can really usher in the kingdom of God on earth and that we look to the Lord of the second advent as manifested in our midst to know that we are moving closer to the last days in the context of the principal approach to it, not in the traditional or literal understanding of the kingdom of God. So I know I've given a lot in that context, but I think that's that if we want to be at a place where we can hasten the coming of the kingdom of heaven, we've got to realize that the that the that the Lord of the second advent is already here upon the earth. And how do we respond to that in the context of what we have been trained in all of our lives? Patriot, you you bring to my mind and be serious for everybody that's listening in or shall listen to what we say this evening. Uh, you, you bring to my mind ignorance. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of ignorance that's going on in this generation relative to God. Now, that's nothing new. Mm -hmm. We know that ignorance started shortly after uh, Jesus left, you know, mm -hmm. and especially you know, we're thinking about now, uh, what, we're 2022, think about the first three centuries, even after Jesus left, the confusion really started setting in. Mm -hmm. And uh, the spirit became more powerful. Mm -hmm. The spirit became more powerful mm -hmm. than the actuality of the eyewitnesses even. Mm -hmm. And the eyewitnesses voice still remained in writing but none of them are living at that time. It, it wasn't at that time as it had been in the Old Testament time where you find they lived 365 years and 910 years. It wasn't that type of walk at that time. John, the last one of the original disciples that lived, tried to, to create a, a representation of the story that would encourage those who would not witness one of them being alive at the time of the return at this, of the second advent, as you pointed out tonight. So a lot became based on spirit. And when we take close look at scripture, and those of us who are called to interpret, those of us who are called to study previous interpretations, as patriot, you know, we've been there, you've been there, you've been all in Rome studying it, studying 
going and going. We are studying interpretation, the depictions of Jesus even physically. We don't have any more. So to talk about looking for the physical historic Jesus as some came up with centuries later, that somehow we've got to get to this historic person of Jesus, instead of realizing intelligently the only aspect of Jesus that we can really gather is the spirit, the comforter that he actually told those who would recognize him if he came back physically. You got to receive in spirit. It's going to be a spirit that's going to come to comfort you and be your comforter. You got to understand when I'm present and when he was ascending, what did those angels say to them? What are you looking for? He's going to come back as he left. He didn't leave in that physical body that, that, that was there, but he left spiritual. Spirit lifted a representation of that. Was there. But it was spirit that was going to ascend with God. So Dr. Tanya Edwards, our eschaton <laughs> instructor. How is this spirit going to bring about this judgment time? Well, it's coming. It's coming whether we want it to or not, basically. But, uh, you know, um, our patriarch George Stallings had said we need to attune spiritually. That means spiritually be ready, be attuned to what's happening around us. And as you said, Dr. Rouse, that uh, in the beginning, God was well pleased with the earth. He was well pleased with the people. He was well pleased with his children. He was well pleased with what he saw and uh, what he had accomplished. What happened from that time till now, uh, where we're looking at revelations, we're actually looking at the end times. We're actually looking at things that have been foretold and things that are happened. But you know, the, the multitude of the Christian world, uh, they're waiting. They're just waiting because they're still living and some of them are still not living the way they should be living or the way God would be pleased with them living. But they're waiting because we heard about the sun being darkened. We heard about the calamities that are going to take place. And I myself, I will admit, and there have been times that I'm like, well, I haven't seen this happen. I haven't seen the, the moon turn to blood yet. I haven't seen the red heifer yet, although we've heard of things of the red heifer being on the earth. We haven't seen these calamities come to place and these radical changes. So I still have time. I still have time to repent. I still have time to let go of what I'm doing or I'm involved in. And we look at that not realizing that these things and that and uh, that God and the revelation has depicted, uh, not specifically, uh, but in reality, there is a judgment coming, as we know, and there is an end time coming. There is a kingdom on earth that will take place. And so we find people living the way they want because they haven't seen these calamities really happen. And we're becoming, uh, you said, attuned spiritually, George, but you know, we become attuned to the calamities that have happened on earth now. We're becoming attuned to murders. We're becoming attuned to house breakings in and, and, and the, uh, so many things that are happening. We're becoming attuned to this. But if we could become attuned to the spiritual side, attuned to the spiritual walk, attuned to the spiritual things that God has for us, we would be further down the road, I think. But I want to understand that we, or we need to understand, I specifically, we talk, you talked about the, the uh, earth with fire, being burnt with fire. Well, you know, we hear in the Bible about the lake of fire, that the, 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 um, the hill is the lake of fire. Then we hear that the earth is going to burn with fire. So we need a better, deeper understanding what these things are talking about and why. And, you know, the word is our judgment. The word is what is going to judge us and hold us accountable for what we know and don't know. And so we think of things like 
paradise, purgatory, the new heaven, the new earth, all intriguing and interesting things and uh, need current dialogue. But what about the eschatology, the revelation, the things that are brought to our mind right now at this time, the world as we see it, the earth as we see it, where's it all going? From the time we see Jesus was so pleased until now, until the end of the time. And so we have to be ready. And like you said, and I'll repeat it, attuned spiritually. And I'm so grateful for your words tonight, Patriarch Stallings. It was so wonderful and blessing and uh, enlightening. And I'm so thankful to, for that. And Dr. Rouse, I thank you for allowing me to comment um, because so much is in my mind and my heart that I want to uh, you know, bring forth and to release and talk. Sometimes I just go to God and talk to him about it. And, uh, I, you know, what is this about the lake of fire? What is this? The earth is going to burn with fire. What is this that he's not going to destroy us with fire? What does all that mean? What is all this about? But it's something that we are learning. And I want to thank you both for this opportunity and this subject and the topics at hand. Thank you very much, Dr. Rouse. Thank you, Dr. Edwards. You as patriarch scholars have reminded us tonight that God is more than that some object that is out there, that God's being is, as True Mother has said, the owner of the universe. And the owner of the universe has gifted us with the incarnation of the heavenly parent on earth in Jesus Christ, who then passed this mission on to true parents with very specific instructions that we've got together. But I caution all of us, I'm going to caution all of us to leave this with us. We must not be guilty of what human beings have been guilty of in the past. Every time that God has taken action is to think that we need confirmation when God acts with revelation, God is constantly revealing. We are not to be living in days past, but every time is going to be different tomorrow from the time experienced today. We must live forward and see God and God's revelation. God is the one revealing to us. Even when we think about church, church today is different from church yesterday. And not just because of the pandemic, that's the way it has been throughout church history. And it's going to continue to be that way. What we can begin to see in the church today, especially those of you who have been a part of the validity of the unification movement, but that there was a transformation of history that took place with the true parents, that Father Moon was given specific instructions to break, make the church become revelatory on earth, just as Jesus became so with the birth we celebrate at Christmas. If you are to believe that you are who you say you are and following the true parentage, then you have to believe that the church is not dead, nor the church will the church die. Because here's what true parents did in listening to Jesus Christ, became the representation of Jesus Christ and the bride of Christ. That forms the church for the reach to become the true unity of all Christianity. Now, what we must also realize is that Christianity has always been on shaky ground because people try to get confirmation instead of revelation. Jesus Christ never confessed to be a Christian. Christianity was not existing with Jesus Christ. No, Jesus Christ brought the revelation of God for a new work and understanding of God working in history. So it is given now. You want the validity 
of the unification movement to reach the minds and hearts of others, start with the one in the mirror. Just do, that's the only one for you to be responsible for. And then you live that out. And through your witness, you don't seek confirmation from others. You continue in the revelation of God. Thank you for being with us tonight. I'm going to the Reverend Mark, Dr. Mark Hernandez to close us out tonight and lead us in a closing prayer. Thank you everybody for being with us. It is great. And as the Patriot has said, join Chosen next week. Hey, listen, we're getting this thing going. Bring all of those clergy, tell them to come. The fire that we got, it's not the fire that's going to burn them to hell for the last days, but the fire that we're bringing is the fire to set the Holy Spirit in in these last days. And offer everybody, True Mother says, that the owner of the universe says get the A plus billion. Tell them that's the fire we're bringing. We're bringing the fire of the Holy Spirit. Right, Dr. Hernandez? Take Amen. this thing. Amen. And bring us. God Amen. bless Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Patriarch Stallings. That was a wonderful presentation. Thank you for preparing uh, for it spiritually. I want to thank everyone for uh, coming on this platform of Chosen on a weekly basis. It's really challenging. It's very, very challenging. Thank you so much to God for that challenge. Thank you, Jesus, for that challenge. Jesus doesn't stop challenging us. Uh, and I really feel that the divine principle is him speaking again to us. As he said, you know, I have many things to tell you, but I cannot, you cannot bear them now. You cannot bear them now. And we, we, we have to open our ears and our minds uh, and uh, really challenge our own selves, as you were saying, Dr. Rouse, it's not just a time of confirmation, it's the time of revelation. It's the time when we really have to be seeking for the word. And, and I was really moved uh, to actually, before the presentation, I looked up that quote from John 5.22. So amazing, uh, because it precedes that uh, the son gives life to whom he pleases. And then 5.22 says that the father judges no one but entrusts all judgment to the Son. And to me, that's really, you know, there's the word in a book, but the word in a book really can't save us. It's the word become flesh. It is Jesus become flesh. Jesus shows us the way to be a true human being, a true individual. And he anointed Father and Mother Moon to show us a true couple, to show true two becoming one. There is no failure in Jesus whatsoever. And just as the way that uh, Jesus anointed Father Mother Moon, he's really anointing each of us. So um, I just want this, this glow of Christmas, the day we celebrate Jesus' birth, to go on and on. In fact, many of our Orthodox brothers and sisters will be celebrating on into January. Uh, people of my heritage, we celebrate the three kings, Dia de los Reyes, and uh, it's the time when we are all thinking about that expectancy. Um, also to, to, you know, I've always had my interpretation of meeting the Lord in the air. Because the, you know, to meet the Lord in the air, you're not standing on concrete ground. You're not standing on what's comfortable, or what's dependable. You know, you, you almost have to reach a place where you are able to float in the air, you know, so to speak, and meet the Lord there in the air. Thanks for giving me a chance to offer some comments and uh, want everybody to remember the World Christian Leadership Conference program on Wednesday. It's gonna be the third anniversary of a very dynamic worldwide organization of Christian clergy coming together. Thank you, uh, uh, Young Soon, for showing the flyer again. And just go to that link in the, in the chat and you'll be able to uh, join by Zoom or just watch it live streamed on Facebook. So please join me in prayer now as we close tonight's chosen program. Our most precious Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Parent, we thank you so much 
we, as the Bible says, and as we feel, even if we were to close our mouths and not praise, the, the rocks themselves would praise you, heavenly parent. They do already. All creation already sings your praises. We thank you so very much that despite how far we fell from your original dream and desire, you sent your precious son You sent him against many odds. And we thank you that every day of his life, he gave his life for us. We thank you so very much that we could and are in the season of celebrating his advent. His advent means that finally one is coming. We thank you also what his, what his birth and life mean to us. It means that the change from dark to light doesn't just happen at one moment, but Jesus grew into his manhood, establishing his perfection and maturity in obedience to you. In obedience to your word, and he became the living word and the author of our faith. We thank you so very much for tonight's presentation on the last days. We pray that we can really, uh, truly, uh, Take the time to let these words simmer in our hearts and minds and the thoughts to be prayed about, just as Dr. Tanya said. We go to the throne room, we go to our closet, and we pray sincerely to seek a, a, an understanding, allow ourselves to be open to your Holy Spirit. We thank you for all these things, for everyone being on this chosen program, for those who will watch it at another time. I offer this prayer in your holy son's name and in all of our names as your precious sons and daughters. Amen and adieu. Good night, everyone. Thank you so much Bye. again, Patriarch. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hernandez. Thank you, Dr. Good night, everyone. Everyone who participated. Thank you. Thank you, Patriarch. Thank you, Dr. Hernandez. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Price. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Yansun. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. God bless you all. Enjoy this Christmas season. Amen. Stay with it through Epiphany coming the 6th of January. That's right. Amen. God loves you and so do I, everyone. Okay. Good evening. Good God bless. 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 God bless everyone. God bless.